Thank you so much for having me here today with all of you. I'm Rep. Liz Miranda, and I have the honor of representing the Fifth Suffolk District here in Boston, in Massachusetts, representing the neighborhoods of Roxbury and Dorchester. A community with abundant talent, great resiliency, and a unique history. I often say that although I've been a legislator now only for 27 months, two terms, I've been a Black woman and the daughter of immigrants my entire life. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit our communities of Roxbury and Dorchester, I was not shielded by my role as a legislator. Myself and over 20 members of my family got COVID-19 despite our best efforts to follow social distancing guidelines, wearing our masks and sanitize. And I also lost my 84 year old grandmother in five days. Our story was not unique. Families in multi-generational households across our district quickly became one of the most impacted communities in the Commonwealth and still remain in that position today. Decades of environmental injustice, over pollution, income inequality, structural racism, lack of affordable and accessible healthy food, and housing segregation were all here before the pandemic and had a devastating impact when COVID-19 hit. My reflection of this pandemic fully realizes the impact and role that pre-existing systematic and systemic inequities played in the impact of COVID-19 and what it had in our communities. Although understanding this inequity was not new to me or anyone in my community, the greater public had finally realized and recognized the deep-rooted injustices across systems and sectors in communities of color across the Commonwealth and across this country. Immediately in April of 2020, soon after my grandmother's death and as I got well, I knew we would have to organize community members in a way that ensured that those most vulnerable to COVID-19 had the information, resources, and community care that they needed to stay safe as the best that they could. We made over 3,000 phone calls to seniors, passed out PPE, multilingual resources were shared, and we delivered hundreds and hundreds of boxes of food. And as a legislator, we filled and filed immediate cash assistance uh, legislation for the lowest income families and the micro and small businesses who are the lifeline in our communities. Despite longstanding efforts, traditional health systems and our social safety net and our emergency preparedness, which we spend lots of money and time on, response were not meeting the needs of communities of color prior to the pandemic. We knew that in a global pandemic, that it would only get worse. But if there were a silver lining and a glimpse of hope that COVID-19 provided, it was that it reimagined and created a renewed awareness, a new self-consciousness and a greater public recognition of what inequity and injustice really is. We now are in a moment to redefine and reimagine our greatest institutions and systems with an anti-racism and equity uh, lens at the forefront. There was no going back to normal. There is no going back to normal because normal was never good enough. Although this presents as a great opportunity, it is also an incredible responsibility. Building a more just future requires us as the industry leaders to center those most impacted to lead, to shape, to build the policies, plans and agendas that will move us all forward. We must evolve to a place where simply inviting those most impacted or most vulnerable to the table is not enough. It's a process of the past. We must shift the burden on us to ensure that we move forward only when the voices of those most impacted have been centered in the decision-making process. We must internalize this notion that lived experience is also credible and very valuable. Conventional wisdom has failed us, even here in Massachusetts, with the best health systems in the world. We were not safe. We were not better off than states with far less resources. And it now highlights for us that the best systems in the world had minimal impact on the outcomes of communities of color. We must say that good is not good enough and not rest on our laurels. Thinking of health systems, we must reimagine what health means in communities like Roxbury and Dorchester. Apply the principles of community organizing work and work harder to understand that we cannot talk about health outcomes 
without talking about trauma, violence, economic mobility, housing justice, and eminent safety. This work requires us all to be intentional in the ways in which we approach leadership, intentional about elevating those who are living the realities of the most significant challenges we face today. We have rugged individualism embedded across our systems, specifically in health and human services, but that has failed all of us. My community experiences nearly every system from health to the criminal legal system, uniquely, dif differently, and disproportionately negatively. Building a safer health system requires us all to have frequent individual, organizational, and collective reflection on how inequities came to be and how they are perpetuated. How hierarchies in our system perpetuate poor health outcomes and reverse power imbalances that are inherent in provider consumer relationships. The most impactful notion that I hope you leave with today is that even well intentioned allies can unintentionally disempower the very people they are hoping to support. This is true across systems. It's why intentionality in centering those most impacted is critical in our approach forward. And I'll leave you with a quote. When marginalized people gain voice and center their own experiences, things begin changing. And we see this in every grassroots movement. Janet Mock. Thank you very much. Next, I will pass the mic to Josh McDaniels.